try again. Let's try again. One point higher. Okay, one more, one more. Oh boy. Let's see. Yes! 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 I was fortunate enough to join Elmore and the Asus ROG OC team in breaking the 9GHz CPU frequency barrier with a liquid helium-cooled Intel Core i9-13900K Raptor Lake CPU. In this video, I want to share some behind-the-scenes clips and information on how we achieved this record. The journey began on November 15, 2022, when I received a message from the ASUS ROGOC team that they were planning a liquid helium overclocking session in two weeks. I have previously attended ASUS OC sessions, including those where liquid helium is used, and sometimes I upload videos of the extreme overclocking achievements on this channel. Having missed the Raptor Lake OC session due to my European travels earlier this year, I was eager to make it this time. In case you missed it, Elmore broke the 10-year-old CPU frequency record at the previous ASUS OC session. The OC session was scheduled for the week of December 5 to 9, with the liquid helium session planned for the very last day. From December 5 onwards, the ASUS ROG OC team was busy sorting through several CPUs. They wanted to find out if any of the chips had more potential than the Core i9-13900K record chip. In the meantime, I was busy setting up a Raptor Lake system with the EK Delta 2 Tech. I will share more information about that system and the overclocking results in a future video. The ASUS ROG OC team for the Liquid Helium session consists of the usual suspects. Sunho, SafeDisk, Peter Tan or Shamino and John Elmore. Sunho and John were each manning their system to pretest the CPUs. At the same time, Shamino helped in case any issues or interesting findings popped up. Along with the Raptor Lake CPU and, of course, the Maximus Z790 Apex motherboard, we also used other specific extreme overclocking tools. Obviously, there's the usual Elmore Labs equipment, which includes the KTH for temperature monitoring, the HOT300 heater backplate to keep the motherboard PCB heated, the PMD to check the power consumption, and the soon-to-be-released Volcano LN2 pot for, well, cooling the CPU. I will leave links to the Elmo Labs products in the description below. The team also prepared two session-specific tools to make our lives easier when the helium flows, a DIY OC panel and a big red slow-mo button. For the big day, Intel sent over a film crew to tape our liquid helium session. The room filled up pretty quickly with the cameras and film crew. Liquid helium overclocking sessions are intense, so it's crucial to plan the day well. Even the preparation phase can be stressful if last minute changes have to be made to the run plan. We usually set up the screen recording on both systems and a webcam to capture the session. I may upload the complete footage of the session sometime in the future, or it may already be up on Elmore's YouTube channel. Let's go to the action. Elmore was first up to try helium with the current 13900K record chip. First, we cool down the CPU to minus 196 degrees Celsius and do a sanity check on the frequency overclock on liquid nitrogen. When everything is ready, we get the liquid helium flowing. Overclocking with liquid helium is definitely more intense than liquid nitrogen. That's not only because it's expensive and you only have a limited quantity available, but also because you're dealing with much lower temperatures. We had about 100 liters of liquid helium available, which gives us about one hour of runtime in an ideal situation. Fortunately, this CPU is excellent with extreme temperatures and didn't cold bug until almost minus 260 degrees Celsius. That's 13 Kelvin above absolute zero. The first run lasted about 10 minutes. While we quickly improved upon the current world record, achieving 8,925 megahertz, we didn't come close to our target of nine gigahertz. After about 25 minutes, the system was beginning to have issues booting up due to the cold temperatures, and we made the decision to move on to the backup system. 
As Elmore and Shamino switched over to the second system, we also swapped over the storage and our validation button. In the meantime, Sun Ho worked to get the first system back up and running for another attempt. Our second system was ready in about 4 minutes. For run 2, we tried another Core i9 Raptor Lake CPU. This CPU had been pre-tested and is about 100 MHz worse than our record chip, so it had potential. Unfortunately, this chip was unable to cope with temperatures below minus 200 degrees Celsius, so it had no chance of benefiting from the liquid helium temperatures. After 3 or 4 attempts in 10 minutes, we decided to bring out a third backup system. It took less than 10 minutes to prepare the third system for a liquid helium attempt. The CPU in this system was similar to the chip from the second system in terms of frequency, but we hoped it would cope much better with the colder temperatures. While that was the case, it still could not match the chip from our first system. So after about 10 minutes, we decided to switch back to our primary system and give it another shot. Sun Ho deserves a lot of credit for the way he got the first system back up and running and kept it ready for another run. Tensions were pretty high at this point because we had nothing to show for so far. To make matters worse, we seemed to be running low on liquid helium. The team felt we had one more shot at this. I will leave you now to watch what happens next without any commentary so you can enjoy the action live. Hey, uh, Yon. Yep. I don't think we stand a chance. I think, uh, judging, or uh, at most I can pull it down to 250 one time. Uh, the, the helium is very weak right now. Okay. So, what? Uh, I don't know. What's the. I'm gonna get some quick. Yeah. I'm set up to try it. Like, yeah. Um, two, two fi 250, uh, maybe you have one shot. Okay. Because <laughs> I don't think I can. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is what it is, right? Uh, so we just get just it to flow. To see what we get. Yeah. <coughs> one shot, one opportunity. Nice spaghetti. Nice spaghetti. To get everything you ever wanted. Go on, go on. No, no, no. It's still moving. But it's too fast. But you can open it. I'm still going down, at least. We saw it. Okay, okay. That, Let's try possible. again. Let's try Let's again. Try one, one higher. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Try it. Yeah. Go. Okay. One okay. More, one more. One more. Uh, yeah. One more. Ready? Yeah. Go. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Leave it. Okay. Fuck it. Leave it. Leave it. Okay, uh, prepare pie fast. Prepare. Uh. 
Following the 9 GHz validation, Sun Ho attempted to break additional world records in PiFast and Super Pi 1M using that same 9 GHz CPU and whatever liquid helium was left in the tank. The CPU ran both benchmarks at 8.44 GHz with a temperature of approximately minus 220 degrees Celsius. The results are equally impressive. The PiFast new world record is 6.85 seconds, an improvement of 110 milliseconds from the previous world record. The new Super Pi 1M record is 3.822 seconds, which is an improvement of 9 milliseconds from the previous world record. Overall, this was a pretty memorable day, not only because we broke the 9 gigahertz barrier, but also how it happened. It was pretty much our last shot when it happened. Also, this is a magical CPU that seems to be made for liquid helium. I've never seen a chip that can run such low temperatures so consistently. To end the video, I want to thank ACES and Intel teams for inviting me to this OC session and their continued support. See you next time. Ta -da!